Hey everybody, welcome to How Do I Know You with your host Mark and Duane. What up? And today we have a special guest. His name is Manny Montana. And Manny Montana, Dang. how do I know you? <laughs> um, thanks for having me, by the way. Um, you mean like what shows I'm on and stuff? Or uh, sure. How do I know you? Yeah. Damn, you just dropping that. <laughs> Weird. Bypassing, Weird bypassing flex, years but okay. years of knowing each other, but fine. <laughs> Oh, oh, what do you watch me on currently? (laughs) (laughs) We reach through the TV to get him. He's here against his will, guys. I mean, sometimes you can see me on Netflix, you know? (laughs) We'll rent him out if you guys need. I didn't know if you wanted, if you wouldn't know that we're brothers. I'm trying to be a professional. It's fine. fine. You're ashamed of me, it's cool. Well, I've known you since birth. Um, And I've known Dwayne since, what, like four years old, five years old? When did you start coming around? Uh, like second grade, school. whatever. Yeah. I mean, so what? You went to Jane Adams? Of course. Oh, then yeah. Yeah, yeah I've known this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've known these guys forever. Um, you out there might know me from different shows, um, and you can look up me up on IMDb if you want. But yeah. Damn. Shows like Good Girls in Graceland. Yeah. There it is, dropping it. And some weak ass show called. Well, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to burn it. Ooh, which one is it? Speculate below. I love every network out there. <laughs> So all the uh, all the girls on Twitter who are like, oh my god, Rick. yeah, that's him. That's he's, crazy. He's here right here. It's weird, man. It's so weird. Really, like when I when you tweeted that or retweeted that thing I had uh, said about you, it was literally because my girl had DM'd me, uh-huh. and it's a girl that she worked with recently, like on a shoot. It's like maybe a year ago, and uh, she was like laughing because she was like that girl was just like going whatever, and I was just like, <laughs> I was like they really don't know this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Like I seen this nigga. I know, man. Seen him eat tuna on his bed shirtless. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, eating tuna on the curb. <laughs> they do not know this nigga. It's so funny to me, man, because it's just so not me. Like when I see stuff like this about other people, I'm picturing like whatever Hemsworth brother or whatever fucking <laughs> you know movie star. Right. So I'm like. Mm, you got the wrong one. But thank you for all the love. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> all the ladies out there, what well, he posted uh, one of our hot takes, the female following we've got. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. It's, it's just wild. I was oh, like, man. damn. I, I genuinely like what you guys do. So, like, I, I just really want to get it out there because I just think it's fun, man. Especially for today's day and age, you got something that's quick, you get involved, and then you're out. And then the next day is something new. Yeah. Man. But you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're just not getting any thanks from us. <laughs> but um, uh, sadly, on a more serious note, uh, today's um, podcast is going to be based on a, a really tragic situation, a tragic event. Uh, Sunday, rapper, West Coast legend before his death, if you didn't know, but now even a bigger just legend, period, Nipsey Hussle. Uh, was gunned down at his store, the Marathon. It's in uh, it's in Crenshaw, uh, and it was like really at first there was like this shock because like when you first see the report, it's like Nipsey Hussle shot, and my first thought was like nah, nah. and nah. then of course it's like all right, someone probably tried to shoot at his car or something. Mm-hmm. They probably hit him in the leg or something like that, and then the reports keep going and it's like shot six times. Now I start thinking, I'm like, wait a minute, okay, yeah. sounds bad, but uh, so-and-so uh, got shot six times, he lived and everything like that, and then you start seeing the videos, and then it just kind of hits you like, wait, this ain't good, mm-hmm. this isn't good at all, and uh, as you guys probably know by now, uh, he he was killed, he died from his gunshot wounds, and uh <clears throat> Uh, I don't know if you guys know real quick, this might be breaking news for some people, but uh, it was um, reported a few hours ago that the the man who uh, is, not, well, not even allegedly, but we're going to say allegedly because you have to, yeah. um, the alleged shooter, uh, murderer of Nipsey Hussle, his name is Eric Holder, um, he has pled not guilty to the murder of Nipsey Hussle, and he's being, his counsel or his defense is Chris Darden. Chris no Darden way. from yeah. the OJ case. Oh, shit. That is his defense attorney in this situation, which is, I don't know how to fuck you afford Chris Darden. Oh, shit. Which is now yeah, making me kind of rethink all this stuff. But um, That's a whole different twist to the story. Yes. And his bond is, what, $7 million or his bail, I mean? No, they, they moved it down. Now it's at $5 million. Oh, shit. So oh, it's more reasonable. 10% of that. 
Jesus Christ. So, uh... <sighs> so the guy that was trying to get OJ is now defending... Oh, defending shit. Him? Yes. Man, yeah, I had that That's thought. Weird. I didn't yeah. want to get there yet, yeah. but this, right. this is weird. Yeah. yeah. This is going to be for another podcast with conspiracy theories and all that shit. <laughs> yeah. But, um... Obviously, one of the biggest things with, with Nipsey Hussle, uh, his untimely demise, is that everyone, of course, is talking about how big he was in the community, in his community. And it's something that is even more sad because he died in the place that he grew up. He mm-hmm. died in the place that literally in songs, he, he talked about hustling in that same exact plaza. He, he talked about buying that same exact plaza. And he was actually building it up. And there's been reports that uh, before, obviously, before his death, he had uh, he had already uh, started making plans to make low-income housing in that same plaza. So he was going to house people that, you know, he grew up around. Mm-hmm. And it raised a couple of questions that people obviously are um, just trying to get answers to. But I think a deeper, uh, I guess, like a deeper or the first question we should tackle with this whole thing is, can you give back to your community safely? Is, is, is there something, is there, a, is there a way to be from a community that you know is obviously dangerous or that you grew up in, but be able to uh, uplift them and give back without getting caught up like yeah. Nipsey got caught up? Yeah, it's, it's, it's so tough, man. And you guys know you come from the same area as me, if like literally streets away. It's streets. Um, it's tough, man. First of all, I want to say... You know, sadly, I never heard any of Nipsey's music. Not one song, not one lyric, nothing. And I, I, I'm eventually going to get to, to listen to his stuff. But right. anytime he came out in an interview or he was spoken of, he just had this dope vibe. He just seemed like a good dude. And he seemed like that, that, that hood dude that everybody knew. Or like, you know, on TV, every every hood dude is portrayed as like this scary dude that's always serious and always tough. Yeah. They don't fucking hood dudes like that. Why why would they be serious all the time? It's fun. They're making money. They got girls. They're happy. And Nipsey just seemed like that good dude that was doing right for his community. So I always respected him. I always really liked him. Um, but to answer your question, I don't know, man. And I like to... You know, like I coached at my old high school. I still coach at Jordan when I can or right, not right. anymore, but I did for like two or three years. And even then, like I feel like I, w- I would have to be cautious. I feel like I couldn't drive a certain car. I felt right. like I couldn't let certain people know where I lived. Um, it's just this weird feeling of like I'm trying to protect myself. I have a family. I just want to be cautious because I never know what somebody else is going to try to get from me because of what they think I make. Right. So I don't know, man, and I don't know the proper way to do it, and I feel like everybody that does is in some shit. So what do you do? Would it be better to help anonymously then? Do you think it would have the same impact if you did that, that way? I don't think so because the reason he touched so many people is because they could see him and they could see that he looks like, like everybody else, he talks like everybody else, and everybody likes the, 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 the dude that came from the hood and made good, right? right. Making money, uh, he's got a beautiful girl, got kids he looks successful he's happy he's going to you know sit in front uh, court side of lakers game it just looks great and i think people aspire to be there and they want to do better when they see that he's still in the hood and still helping out but then you got these fucking fucking dudes that just can't help themselves and i don't know if it's a conspiracy i don't know if somebody put him up to it i don't know what because you got the whole dr sebi thing that's involved with it and him trying to teach proper ways to eat and heal so i don't know what the right way to do because it's it's malcolm x story all over again it's martin luther king's story all over again you're gonna have if it's a conspiracy thing you're gonna have these people that want that are gonna pay somebody to infiltrate this this thing or pay somebody to kill off this person because to them they need the money so how you how do you pass it up right so i don't know i don't know i don't know there uh i guess to put a whole like to give backside to nipsey's story nipsey was and obviously a very successful rapper, but before that he was uh he was from sixties. So he was a crip. He was a gangbanger. He has never denied that. He's never hit it. But he was one uh that was very open about his gangbanging. He was someone who understood what he had to do. He was a hustler. And he understood that he hustled to provide for his family and his people. So that's something to where it is kind of crazy because while he was gangbanging, he was doing it for his community. He was doing it for the people he grew up around, and of course for himself. And then you you leave that, 
not really leave it because he obviously you're still a part of it. Yeah. Um, but you know, you grow to to become something beyond that, and then you go back to your hood. And I feel like the whole what Mark said about can you do it anonymous, anonymously? I feel like you can't because there's just there's a different feeling when you see a nigga from your hood and you see him drive through yeah. in a phantom. Yeah. You see him drive through in a beamer and you're like, wait a minute, that can't be. And then he stop and hop out on you. Right. And he like, what's up with it? And you like, whoa. <laughs> like, or just like, you know, in the crazy part, you know how many times probably Nipsey rode in his hood and was like, get in yeah. to somebody. Like some little nigga who just like, probably didn't even know that he knew him or remembered him. Yeah, yeah it changed his lives. Exactly. And then like, you know, it's just crazy how um, hate is something that really, I feel like it's a disease. I feel like it's contagious because um, the person, you know, who they're saying allegedly murdered Nipsey Hussle was, it's crazy because now you're seeing pictures of that dude in pictures with Nipsey. Yeah, in a video, right? I saw oh, in a music shit. video. He was in a music video with him, I think. Really? I didn't know the, but I saw him in pictures right. with Nipsey. Yeah, like he was circled. Yeah, yeah. and it's just wild because... You know from a like there's a standpoint where they probably were super cool. They probably and to Nipsey probably still were cool. Or at least um, you know, from afar, he didn't have a problem with him. But as Nipsey ascended, this man's envy just yeah. got stronger and stronger and stronger, and then it grew to a hate of a man who came from where you came from. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't want he didn't want no harm done to you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, gave him a pass right there. Oh yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's the big backstory behind this. Uh, apparently the uh the alleged uh shooter was um the whole situation occurred when <clears throat> excuse me, the whole situation occurred when the uh Nipsey Hustle saw the alleged uh shooter around his um establishment and they had a conversation because the guy came up to him and was trying to, you know, kick it and be cool. And uh Nipsey told him like, you know, hey, it's good to see you and everything, but apparently, you know, you're a snitch. And then this goes back to, again, the community and things like that. When you grow up where we come from, that's a big no-no, especially if you're living that lifestyle. There's differences. We all get the whole uh, civilians thing and, like, people who aren't in that lifestyle, that's fine. But when you're in that lifestyle, that is a big thing that you do not do. And from, like, the people who raised me and the people that I, like, you know, who taught me that... Mm -hmm. He should have already been killed just for talking. So I find it just crazy how he was still able to move around like that. And then you see someone who is a big, like, at this point, he's a boss in the 60s now. And he's telling you, like, hey, I'm not going to press you. I'm not going to do nothing to you. You just can't be around here. So that's the story then. That happened. He comes back shooting. Yeah. Not trying to rob him. Not trying to take money. That's the story? Yep. Jesus, man. And uh, apparently he didn't like the fact that a, someone gave him a pass, which I don't understand. Gave him a pass. Not, actually, it wasn't even a pass. Uh, apparently the story goes that Nipsey said, you know, they had a conversation. And he said, you know, if you're not a snitch, bring your paperwork. And for people who getting caught into the system or getting cases and stuff, there's paperwork provided to you when you catch a case. There's paperwork that's provided to you after you have a case, right? So... It outlines everything that you're charged with and how you got out, right? So that's the whole paperwork thing. People who aren't, who aren't understanding that. He told him to bring his paperwork. You know, if you're not a snitch, you're saying you're not a snitch, show me your paperwork and we can be cool. And that's why he left. Yeah. So he, he, he was letting them, you know, be like, hey, man, prove it to me. Then. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. still he wanted to help out people. He oh. still wanted to help out people, yeah. So... <clears throat> But to get back to the whole uh, helping out your community thing, I think it's something where I honestly feel like at this point it does do more of a disservice to help your community and be active in the community than it would be to help your community from afar. And that's just because there's too many variables in, like, places where we grew up. Like, for someone like you, Manny, who... um, you know, you went like you went to Jordan. Yeah. You went to the same like high school I went to, and you know how it was during that time period. You know the people that you grew up around or whatever. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of friends you have or people that you know that are either dead, in jail, uh, still on some bullshit and everything. And you can't just come back around. Yeah, it's weird because I was always a good kid. 
Right. And same with you guys. Like, you're a good kid. You're a good kid. But, like, you know, you're around shit and you know what not to do. Right. You know, I, I walked down the same streets, got uh, got punked, had to swallow my pride a bunch of times. And then you just learn, okay. We all got banged. Again, again, sorry for punking you so right. <laughs> <laughs> And then, man, you're like, okay, can't walk down that, that street anymore. Can't wear those shoes walking yep. down the street anymore. You just learn. It's just things growing, from, growing up around our way. But I just... Yeah, like, you know, it, it's weird that you that you asked that question because this month alone, I've come across, like, friends that I had from, like, middle school and high school, and I've reconnected with them. Right. And I went to go have lunch with, with one, and, you know, he was just telling me stories about stuff that happened, like, from high school and on because I hadn't heard from him in forever. And right. I, won't, I won't say any names. And, like, just telling me the stuff that he, that, that he went through and the things that he did, and I'm just blown away because, to me, he was always just normal, right. m- normal friend. Right. And, you know, I actually just saw another dude at Costco yesterday that I hadn't seen in forever, tatted up, literally, like, all around the head. And I'm just complimenting his work, because I saw him from, from behind, and I'm like, hey, man, that's, that's cool work. And he turns around, he's like, Manny? And we stopped and talked for a minute, and he told me his stuff, and I'm like, man, this shit is crazy. So all this to say, like, I don't really know how to go about doing it, because I want to help, but I also don't want you to know where I live. Right. And I want to give you money. But then if I give you money, you're just going to blow it. I want to teach you how to earn it, but you really don't understand what it takes to make it. Like, let's even compare it to acting. I, I got people coming at me left and right. Hey, man, hook me up with your agent. Right. Or some, uh, 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 introduce me to, to your manager. And I'm like, what do you want me to, to show them? And then they're stuck. And I'm like, well, show them I, me, nigga. You know right? me. <laughs> just like, my face. <laughs> I'm like, give me a demo reel and, and, and I'll show it to them. I tell that to everybody. And they're like, well, how do I make a demo reel? And I'm like, bro, I got a wife, I got a kid, I got a career. I don't have time to show you how to make a demo reel. Right. And then I feel like they look at me like, oh, man, that's motherfucking Hollywood. Like, you ain't got yeah. time to help nobody. And I'm like, how? I can't do this shit for you. If you do 80% of the work, I'll help out. I'll fucking carry you across that, the finish line, the rest of that 20%. But people don't want to do that, and then you get hate, and then you get envy, and then you get this shit. So I don't know the proper way to do it, because if you do do it anonymously, let's say I created like a Boys and Girls Club, right. the Manny Montana Boys and Girls Club. Motherfuckers will go, they'll have fun, but it won't have the same effect that Nipsey had in the hood by right. seeing him, by hopping in his car, by talking to him, by whatever. You know, the same thing that Tupac had. Like, I still got motherfuckers telling me, like, yeah, like, I was sitting next to Tupac in a club one day, and I'm like, what? That shit blows me away to this day because he had that effect on me. And I'm sure Nipsey had the same. So I don't know, man. Hopefully I'll find the, the remedy one day. Do you believe that, like, you just uh, you just said that um, the guy who was tatted up in Costco and everything like yeah. that, and you were just complimenting his work, in that situation, you're in Costco. Yeah. You're in a grocery store and everything like that. Yeah. There's no part of, like, some fear when, you know, he turns around he's like, Manny? You know? Oh, oh like, no, nah, actually, no. Okay. No, no, no. Well, as you know, I could fight. Right. <laughs> Look. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone can catch his hands is what he's trying to say. No, nah, no, nah, I'm just fucking. Me and, me and Dwayne spar a lot. He got hands. We got hands. <laughs> we, we went at it. It was fun. Um, so like, just, you know, the first time he hit me a lot, but <laughs> second time it was better. <laughs> no, nah, man, for real, like I, I don't fear. I don't. I don't fear talking to anybody. I always have fun. I always feel like I'm cautious wherever I'm at. So now there's no fear when it comes to it. But I'm also not like on the east side at ten o'clock at night, right? Walking around, right? You know what I mean? And whatever I'm doing, I'm cautious about it because I worry about my family. Like, I don't want my son to grow up without a father. I don't want my, my wife to be a widow. So I'm always cautious about what I'm doing. But I love Long Beach, man. And I, I was talking to, to uh, Chewy, and we were, uh, he was giving me, he was tatting me up. And he lives, like, close to the hood, but away from it. And we were both, were like, I just like being able to see the hood. Right. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I mean that in a way where I could help. I could be there if my family needs me. I could be there to eventually help, like, the next generation. But I don't want to be in the midst of that shit because of stuff like Nipsey. So, I don't know. Because it's always the random people. It's never, like, some, like, big freaking boss come in to fight another big boss. It's always, like, yeah. some person that has nothing to lose. Like, wasn't... I forget which world war was it, but it was just some random dude that was pissed off at this duke or whatever, shot him, assassinated him. Now the whole fucking world is at war yeah, because of right. some fucking nobody, man. Yeah. Right. Or it, however many wars started because of, you know, the love of a woman or, yeah, you know, or, or this guy. And, yeah, some jealousy or whatever. Yeah, and it's, it's, again, it's some lower level person that doesn't understand that I don't have millions. 
Like, mm-hmm. don't think because I'm on a show or don't think because somebody made a a, 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 a fucking hip-hop song or whatever song, a couple songs that they're rich. It doesn't work like that, mm-hmm. man. I've been in the game for 10 years working steady, and I still have to, like, save up every dollar. And, like, you know, it doesn't go like that. Like, the only people... And, and like, I remember... Um, fuck, why am I blanking on his name? Uh, Chicago rapper, number three hat. Oh, Chance the Rapper? Chance the Rapper. <laughs> Chance the Rapper was on an interview and he was like... He playing at me, nigga, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know, you know. <laughs> like, he was on an interview and he was like, man, motherfuckers ain't m- making money like that. Like, maybe Jay, Diddy, you know, them like right. that. And this is coming from, from Chance, who I, I assume was, like, super rich. And I'm sure he has good money. He's a great artist. But it's, it's that. Like, people just assume that it's one thing and it's not... So all the hate is misdirected because I'm not the one. Like, if you rob me, you're not going to get much. I'm sorry. Yeah. They compare it to, I would say, like a regular job where you, you pay like regular taxes and stuff like that. Oh, God. In the entertainment industry, you, you pretty much give away like more than half your check. So whatever like price tag you think they're making, yeah. just half of it. If we're, if we're going on a comparative thing, I think I paid more in taxes this year than my father makes in like three years. Damn, it, it's it, it's it's crazy. You have no idea the amount of money you're paying in taxes when you're when you're in the industry. Yeah, it's funny because uh, you know when you were when you were on a damn it, the, how dare you? No, <laughs> no, 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 wait, how dare you? Never remember each one of my words. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the Graceland. Graceland. There you go. Uh, when you were on Graceland, um, I don't know if I can say it, but I'm gonna say it, and then I'll take yeah. the ass whooping later. Uh, but, <laughs> um. Uh, I think about what your first season or like your first two seasons, you were still at your dad, mm-hmm. right? So it oh, was yeah, it was so. <laughs> it was funny because I would go uh, to your house to <laughs> like hang out with this nigga or talk to this nigga, and then you would be there, and then we'd uh, talk, kick it or whatever, and then of course I would go home, and then I'd be like, oh yeah, I saw uh, I saw Mark's brother, we talked or whatever, and my mom would be like, well. How much is he making? Right, and then see? I'll be like, I don't know. I'm not counting his pocket. She like, but he owned TV and he's still at his dad's house. And she's like, mm, he must not be making that much. And I'll be like, mom, I was like, maybe he's saving his money. I don't know. Like, yeah, <laughs> or whatever. Man. Right. And then it's she, that. that's what would happen. It's, it's really that, man. Like, not knowing that I, I was there for the whole three seasons. I was at my dad's house. One, because me and my dad are like this. Right. And then two, we were shooting in Miami. So, like, why would I come home and then get an apartment for a few months just to go back to Miami? But, I saved up every dollar and was able to buy a house, but it's that. People just assume, like, oh, he must be balling. Like, I'm not. Trust me. I'm fucking... Was, I'm in that was, sweats. That was... <laughs> <laughs> cooking your fucking Brussels sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> they smelled. <laughs> uh, oh, I would say, like, that's that's a better plan than what most people... Because that was your first big show, right? Yeah. yeah. First time, right? So, any what's the typical story? Someone gets on a big show for the first time. Stop they blow wild. through all their money. Yeah. And then after the show's done, like, you see them, like, fucking on the corner or something. Just trying to, like, <laughs> sucking dick. Like, <laughs> just fucking on the corner. <laughs> is that man on Long Beach Boulevard? Why is he? <laughs> yeah, but that's the truth, man. And I still got a lot of, like, I tell Deli, like, girls that I used to date that are actresses that, like, I don't ever say any names. But, like, we'd be kicking it. And it'd be, it'd be, like, a boring, like, weekend indoors. And, like, legit, they'd be like, we should go to France. Like, let, let's go to France. Uh, <laughs> and I'd be like, what? <laughs> you mean right now? Like, let's get a ticket and go tomorrow? And like, yeah. And I'm like, you know how much that costs? They're like, yeah, but we'll make it back. And I'm like, how? Nah. I just come from a different world, man. I'm not going to blow my money just to have fun for a weekend because you're bored right now. That's why I fucking love my wife. Shout out to Deli. We'll sit at home all fucking day and take a walk around the block and, like, we're happy, so... Yeah. Oh, they know Adolfo. She's been on the show. She's oh yeah, a co-host sometimes. <laughs> Adolfo Moore. What is you guys' definition of keeping it real? Oh man, good question, Mark. Pass now. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's just kind of um, just being true to your word. Like like if you could do stuff and then not feel like fake or ashamed afterwards after you did that action then I think you're keeping it real for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, it's funny. There's a, It changes as you get older in whatever industry you're in, man, because I can't keep it real in the generic sense in acting and in the industry. Because I remember, like, mad fucking writers 
coming to me like during Grace and I'd be like, hey, between us, uh, what do you think about you know this director? Or between us, what do you think about like this guest star that we had? And I would be like, between us? And they'd say, yeah. And I'd answer them. I, the next day, every fucking writer knew. Whoever <laughs> I was talking about knew. And I'm like, oh, it, it doesn't work it was the same the way. Okie doke. And I would like confront this writer, like, hey man, how, how dare you do this? Right. And then they go and tell the producers that I threatened them. And I'm like, oh shit, I really can't keep it real here. I can't be myself here. So keeping it real to me, honestly, man, it's what Mark said. And also being able to. Uh, fuck. It's hard to navigate. It really that is. Room. It's like being able to adjust and adapt while still helping people and helping the people around you while being true to yourself. Like, some of the best advice I ever got was from somebody I'm not a big fan of, and I'll say his name is Steve Harvey. We used to, I used to work in radio, and he, you know, he was a host there, and I remember him oh, saying yeah. one time, <laughs> yeah, it's been a minute. And he was like, uh, the best thing you could do for a, per- a poor person is not be one. And as a kid, I was like, that's fucked up. But it's the truth. Like, how can you help somebody when you can't help yourself? And, like, you know, if somebody's drowning and you can't swim, don't jump in the water because you're going to die too. Right. So, like, maneuvering in that way, like, all I want to do by keeping it real is by helping the next generation. I keep in touch with all the kids that I used to coach. I love, like, rapping with you guys and talking to you guys and seeing your growth and development and, like, new ideas and and trying to take things further and, like, helping in any way that I can. Um, whether it be financially or just an ear to fucking to, to, to hear you out. So to me, that's keeping it real. And honestly, being good to your, to your family and, and friends around you. Um, but sadly, a lot of hood dudes don't think that's keeping it real. At all. Uh, and that's what I was going to kind of get into. Because for some reason in our communities, um, that whole the whole thing of keeping it real, that whole phrase usually is met with some sort of violence mm-hmm. or stupidity, mm-hmm. which I never understand because, um, like in high school and shit, uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm a pretty smart kid. I'm not going to lie, right? Back at Jordan or whatever, that was something that was not looked good upon it's at all. Cool. It's not cool. <laughs> like, you know what I mean, bitches? was like, you fine, but nigga, you... <laughs> but you got straight A's. Like, like, uh-huh. Why are you doing your homework? <laughs> like, what are you doing? You like, fucking nerd. Like, <laughs> I, was on, I was on the baseball team starting. They didn't give a fuck. Like, and I'm like, I'm popping out here. No, right, nothing. nothing. Not because yep. I'm not because I listen in class and whatever. But every dude who, you know, quote unquote, kept it real or whatever. They were they were doing dumb shit or uh, selling weed in school. Which I always thought it was stupid. Um, uh, and, you Good know, money. Uh, it, it's not. But <laughs> it's, it's really not because like have people scared to buy that shit anyways. Like, who are you selling it to? I mean, more money than not having. It's more money than zero. That's I what guess. I'm saying. But I um, deal in high school. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there was like like I always say like girls back then they liked uh, the thugs, mm. the drug dealers, and just like the tough dudes or whatever. Like you couldn't be an average regular nigga. You couldn't back be then. a childish Gambino. You couldn't right. at all. That yeah. shit wasn't. Cool like in the, our day. At um, all. So like you had day. to yeah. <laughs> We're the same age. <laughs> this is why like it sucks because you had to uh you had to sometimes portray characters and I'm I'm gonna say characters because like most of the time uh, a lot of us we was faking like a motherfucker because oh, yeah. we was we was scared yeah. to do certain shit or whatever, but you knew like growing up it's like some certain shit you just couldn't let slide because it was going to be worse yeah you know so there were situations i got into as a kid or whatever that uh, i remember one distinct one right um there was this kid who had said something about my little sister my little sister is autistic right so this kid um was like he was way bigger than me or whatever right and you know we in the hood and everything uh, we all outside and then he says like man why your sister look like that everyone goes like ooh and everything so like me I'm like eight, maybe, right? And I'm like, hmm, should I feel offended? Because in my mind, I'm like, he didn't say anything offensive. He said, why does, does your sister look like that? But it was implied. Right. But it was implied, right? And I'm like, how do I, how do I respond to this? Yeah. And then, like, the homies was like, was like, man, like, man, I fucked that nigga up and everything like that. And I'm like, hmm, never been in a fight before. Okay, let me, let me, let me gauge this. In my literal response, all right, so this, this is y'all knowing me now, but back then, nah, all right? So my literal response was like, hey, man, I ain't say nothing about your sister. Nigga was like, hey, coming back. <laughs> Don't say nothing about my sister. And then he was like, I was just saying everything. I was like, yeah. And then in my mind, I was like, oh, fuck. I have no, right. I have no idea what was going to happen, right? 
And that's what I'm talking about where it grows because from that point on or whatever, it was like, all right, no matter how stupid the situation is or whatever, like, you can't turn around. Not in these circumstances. Or you can't be a, a quote-unquote a bitch, mm-hmm. whatever, because... There's no turning the cheek. There's none of that, right? Yeah. So then fast forward, uh, like, a couple months later, we're playing these kids um, at the park. Right? So we're, uh, we're on Rad D Forest Park. Anyone knows that park? Legendary Long Beach Park for yeah. a lot of shit yeah. <laughs> going down. But um, we're at D Forest Park, and I'm, like I said, I'm like eight, nine. And we're playing these kids, kids in tackle football who were like 14, 15. And uh, this one big dude, he was trying to run me over, whatever. So I grab him. I tackle him and everything. He got upset, right? And he was like, he was like, nigga, you grab my shirt again. I'm going to fuck you up and everything like that. And, of course, this is me getting into, like, my developmental years. And I was like, I was like, fuck you, nigga, do it or whatever, right? So, of course... I'm like, oh, so he turns around and he's like, he's like, he's like, what? And all my friends that are like, they, we're all different ages. So like, one of them was like, oh. formation M. <laughs> <laughs> one of them's like eleven. One of them's like fucking thirteen or whatever. They like touch that nigga. I swear, everyone jump your like, you jump your ass and everything like that. And it was like weird because it was like, oh shit. It was like this adrenaline, like oh fuck, you know, I'm oh, yeah. in a situation now, but I'm ready for it and everything like that. But shit like that bred a lot of dumb decisions because that was rewarded, which it shouldn't have been rewarded. Right. And that's kind of what I'm trying to get to with all this stuff. I feel like keeping it real, people think doing really dumb shit and being a quote-unquote tough guy in the wrong moments, it will breed this, like, just this life of this shit. And then we all end up doing a lot of dumb stuff that isn't really cool because, honestly, keeping it real is... Being able to take care of your people. Keeping yeah. it real is actually boring. Right. Like, it's, it's very boring. <laughs> like It's like when people, I think when people use that phrase, it's the equivalent to be like, oh, come on, don't be a bitch. Right. It's right. like they're right. trying to get you to do something, even though they know it's going to, like, probably fuck you up later. No cons- consequences for me. Right. But, you know. And nine times out of ten, it's getting you to do something that they ain't going to do. Right. Exactly. They're not going to do it at all. And I had to learn that super uh, early on because I wasn't, like, I didn't have uh, brothers or anything like that. And all my cousins were, like, far this way. So, um, like, my male influences, honestly, were just niggas I grew up with on the streets. Mm-hmm. So, it, there was, like, I'm not I'm not ashamed. I was raised by a lot of gang bangers and gang members. Like, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to front at all. So, like, the way I'm wired to a degree is, like, I have to meet, uh, like, uh, me, um, sorry, I'm fucking blanking, meet any sort of, like, uh, discomfort mm-hmm. with, like, I have to be aggressive. I yeah. can't be like, nah, you're you going to slide, you're going to slide. But I'm learning, now that I'm out of the hood, right. I can't do that. Like, But you were, like, it's weird, because I always saw you, like, you were always a good kid. Right. In my, in, in, in my like in my opinion, right? And I know so many kids out there that are like that, but because keeping it real, and then you start fighting, and then right. you start like jumping people, with, that shit changes you immediately, right. immediately. And then you have to relearn this shit the older you get, because once you start working, if you keep it real and fight at at a job, you're fired. Um, so the older you get, the more you're learning, and that's why I can't fuck with a lot of people that I used to fuck with back in the days because. Man, I tell anybody that I love, I love I, like in person, like, I love you, man. And, like, motherfuckers still think that's weird. I'm like, why is it weird that I'm telling you how I actually feel? You're thinking this shit. Shit gay. But you can't say it. Yeah. Shit is man, gay. Man, you gay, man. You're acting gay. I'm like, all I'm telling you is that I fucking love you, man. I've known you for 10 years. I'm not to kiss you or anything. You you. <laughs> Unless it's on the table. It, no, no. Yeah, no, no, no. No, I'm not trying to. <laughs> but on the real, like, acting helped me open up so much bullshit. All the cool right. shit that you have growing up. And all the keeping the real bullshit that you have growing it up. And it just made me be open with people because this is how I feel. And I don't. I, I went to too many funerals as a kid where I was like, I'm hearing all these people talk about, man, I wish I would have told him that, you know, how, how much he meant to me. And I wish I would have told him how, how much he inspired me. I wish I told him how much he loved me. So I used to always be like, okay, I'm going to, I'm just going to tell people. And motherfuckers used to think I was so weird for that <laughs> shit. But I'm like, why do we have to wait till we're old to be able to help and to be able to tell people? And I feel like Coming back to what Nipsey was, I feel like Nipsey was just that dude that he was able to keep it real while being good to his people and helping everybody out and just still being a normal dude. So I don't know the fucking way to do it right. And I don't know what it's going to take for minorities as in general to get past that bullshit of trying to be cool and, and, and trying to keep it real and just be a fucking good person. I feel like it's changed a lot since my day because when I was in high school, motherfuckers would not... 
they wouldn't be the way they are now. Like, I remember watching my kids while I was coaching and how, like, in, in a way, affectionate they were with each other. Like, right. they'd be like, love you, bro. Even if it was joking, it was different from, it would never happen in my day. Right. And I like that it's changing. And I like that, like, you know, when fucking Pharrell came out, you know, dressing like a, like, like a skateboard kid, mm-hmm. it made a whole generation of black and Latin kids feel comfortable dressing how they wanted to dress. And I feel like every year that passes, that's slowly becoming more and more normal. And it's not like a, it's no longer, oh, well, that's how black people dress. That's how Mexican people dress. That's how Asian people dress. It's just becoming more eclectic. So I feel like it's coming to a good point where we could actually open up and keeping it real doesn't have to be some bullshit gangbang and shit. So it's slowly changing. But. I, was, I was actually talking to Dwayne about this the other day. Um, back when me and Dwayne were like in middle school, high school. Bro, you snitching already. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> we were like the only group of friends that was like mixed race. That's right. Like, yeah. you know, like it was, it was black, Mexican. We had an Asian there. Um, everyone else stuck with their own kind for some reason. And anytime, like, we would all hang out at school and bring our groups of friends, they would all get along. Yeah. But if we weren't there, then they're not going to hang out with each other, right? right? Ever. And then recently, like, um, I'll be driving down, like, somewhere, and it'll be by a school, and all the friends are just, like, a collection of different races. I'm like, this is fucking awesome. It's awesome has become a normal thing. Yeah, you kind of trailblazed it, man. And and I'll say the same thing. My, My experience in high school was that. Like, I played football, so... I'd be the, you know, Mexicans don't play football at that time, so I'd be the only person on the team who wasn't still don't. black. <laughs> they play <right>? football. <laughs> so, like, I had mad motherfuckers being like, oh, man, he thinks he's black. Man, he's trying to be black. I'm like, no, I was just raised around, like, a lot of black people. I always got along with them. I, you kind of start talking how your friends talk. I love black culture. I love uh, Latin culture. I love Asian culture. It's like, I just loved everybody. So, I remember being the only Latin kid I knew that dressed kind of like hip-hop. And right. now I go to to the high school and like everybody's dressing hip hop and everybody's saying my nigga this and my nigga that and I'm like what the fuck <laughs> like I remember getting my ass whooped for trying to do shit like that so I like how it's changing but you know it takes time. Do you think it's something that we're uh, us as a community we're uh, pushing that stigma more because like you guys just stated and it's true like you you go by any high school any elementary school. Everything's mixed. The people you live by, you don't live by the same people. I guarantee you, you don't. You like these kids grow up with friends that are black, Asian, uh, Mexican, whatever, right? But there's like something happens that a switch hits, and then everything ends up getting spread out. Yeah. And it always hits around high school, and I never understood why. Yeah. And that's why I'm like trying to ask the question: Is it something that because conspiracy theories will say, or theorists will say, you know, um. It's the government. You know, they, they push these narratives in, in our communities and things like that. And they make us feel like, you know, they make us hate each other. They make us do these things. But the way I look at it, I'm like, at no point did I ever not like this nigga. At no mm-hmm. point was I never not cool with you. At no point did I, never, did I ever see, like, uh, a Spanish girl and be like, nah, I can't fuck with her. Right. Like, you know, and it's weird because I'm like, to me, to be honest, I feel like it is something that, uh, people who are older than us, our parents, older brothers, whatever, instill in us, and then they push it down, and then we end up instead of turning that corner, we make the same damn turn they make, and we're back in the same bullshit. Yeah, yes and no. I feel like we're carrying the torch forward as opposed to like other people that aren't. right. So I, it's hard because I, I, tell me if I'm going down the wrong direction, but like. I remember reading Malcolm's book, right? Mm-hmm. And I kind of reread it like once a year or every couple of years. And there's this one part in the book that always sticks out to me. He's like, you know, minor- and he says black man, so I'm going to say black. He's like, the black man wants to uh, make a lot of money uh, or if the black man is successful and wants to move to like the rich areas. But the rich area is usually the white area. And you get to these areas and they don't want you there. But you can't stay in your own hood because they'll rob you. And this is just stereotypically speaking. And I feel like I'm in that situation right now because, yeah, I, I don't live in a rich-ass area. I live in an okay area, but, like, it's all older white people there. And, like, I swear these motherfuckers, and you guys have been there. Like, they're, like, we're walking down the street. They're looking out their windows like, what they doing? No, we're fucking just walking down the street. Like, I'm sorry I don't look like you. I'm sorry I, like, want to paint my house a different color. I'm sorry I want to build a fence on my own and do my own yard work. Like, why is that a, why is that a problem to you? Why is that an issue? Um... Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Remind me your question really quick. Um, shit, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Damn it. Mark. Uh, I was not paying attention. Damn it. <laughs> I am the camera guy. Oh, uh, wait, I got it. Uh, um, is it, are we to blame for the, uh, you know, the whole keeping it real stigma? Or is it something that uh, our, our previous generations to oh, blame for that? Or gotcha. are we... Uh, I'm starting to, to the you know, the older I get, the more I realize it is kind of just a race thing. You know, I, I still see, like, you know, I have a son now, so I get to watch everything from a different perspective. And I see, you know, certain parents of a certain distinct color <laughs> mm-hmm, I'm say, um, that are teaching their kids just to, like, fuck everybody else. Your happiness is what's important. Right. Um, and I see them teaching the same bullshit that their parents taught them and teaching them hate and teaching them envy and teaching them jealousy. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? So it just, it's passed down from generation to generation. So I don't know how to, how to get out of that. I don't know how to make people, help them understand that this is not the way to do it. And it, you'll be much happier if you just incorporate everybody and learn from different races. So, yeah. It's a hard thing to teach, some, like, teach someone that it's been instilled in them since birth. Like, how do you get through to that kind of person? Yeah. So that's it, that's where the challenge is. It's tough because there's also no excuse, too, because, like, our grandpa and our dad, you know, coming over here to this country with nothing, like, I remember, like, you know, hearing my grandpa drop an N-bomb sometime, and I'd be like, yo, grandpa, what are you doing? He, and he'd be like, what, ain't, ain't that what you call him? And I'd be like, no. So, like, we had to tell him, like, that shit ain't cool. Yeah. So if I would you, say my dad had a, a good excuse because he learned English by being here. Right. And he just heard it like from other people he was around. He was just like, oh, "Well, that's what they call each other. That's what, what right. the English. I thought that was the English word for it." Right. <laughs> and I was just like, eh. "We." I mean, we taught him eventually, but it was just like, eh. "Yeah." But like the people that aren't teaching their kids and aren't and those kids aren't teaching their kids to to be better to people. I just don't get it, man. Because I fucking love black culture. I love different kind of foods from different cultures. I love everything about it, so I don't see what the fucking problem is. It's a thing, too, when you learn about the culture and you're involved in it, you realize, like, it's there's so few differences. Mm-hmm. Like, we have way more in common than, than differences. Do you think, uh, us as a culture community, do you think we suffer from, like, trauma and, like, those type of things that make us do the things, like, that happen to Nipsey and everything? Because I just don't... Yeah. That's the thing that's really still bothering me. I don't understand how you go to those lengths to end someone's life in the manner that he ended it over a comment. They, they say people that grew up like in the ghetto and stuff pretty much suffer pe- from PTSD. Like, we all do. Like, some kind of form. Yeah. Do you believe that? Because there's a part of me that's like, I feel like these want us on medication. I, <laughs> I don't know if it's for medication reason, but I, I do believe it to a certain extent. Maybe not like the crazy, crazy ones of like soldiers and stuff, because they right. see some crazy shit. But we grew up seeing pretty crazy shit, living in a non like war zone area, and we see some crazy shit, and it just we have to make it normal in our brains because if if it's not normal in our brains, then we're gonna lose our shit and just go crazy. Yeah. So we have to force ourselves to be like, no, that's fine. That's just how things are here. See, that's the wild part about the whole keeping it real stigma because I saw uh, I saw a guy get murdered when I was twelve, and literally. Like, I saw a car pull up, something happened, saw his body drop, people screaming, and I'm like, uh. And it was weird because the same car that did it, as I was riding my bike home, passed me. So that always stuck with me, right? And it was always something like, damn, you know, I could have still been outside or whatever, right? And it's something to where in my mind, it like, instantly, it was normal. I was just like, he either did something or I'm like, he from the wrong hood, in the wrong area. Whatever. But then growing up now, I was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, 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 that shit is not normal. It's not normal at yeah. all. Like, and it, it still bothers me. There's a situation where when I was, uh, I was uh, 10, and um, me and my grandpa, every weekend, we would go wash his car. So my grandpa, he wasn't a person who was like, pay people. He would literally go to the self-service ones, and we would yeah. both wash it and everything like that. And one day, um, this guy who... Um, he was a, he, he banged uh, clearly at least now I know but at that time I was like what the fuck is wrong with this dude um, but uh, he had gotten to a car accident so uh, I, I know you know the car wash I'm talking about it's the one right next to the barber shop next to Jordan yeah 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 so um, he had gotten to a car accident uh, there a tow truck came and they towed it into the car wash to just get it out the street my grandpa knew the guy driving the tow truck so 
at this point, my grandpa's like probably 64, 65 or whatever. And uh, he goes up to the uh, to the guy and he starts talking. He, he's like, hey, guy was Hispanic. He's like, hey, amigo, what's going on? He's like, oh, hey, what's up? And then he starts talking. He's like, yeah, you know. Um, he's like, yeah, for a really bad accident and everything. The guy who was in the car or whatever, he comes from the side, right? And this nigga's probably, at that point, he was probably either 19, 20 or whatever. And uh, he comes up and he looks at my grandpa and he, he's like, He's like, hey, old nigga. He was like, stay, he's like, stay the fuck out of my business before I smoke your ass. And, like, I looked at him, right? And I was just me as a kid. But I knew I was like, my mind, I was like, whoa. And, like, I love my grandpa. Like, I idolized my grandpa. Mm-hmm. He was everything to me. So, as that, I was like, the fuck? Or whatever, right? And then my grandpa was like, okay, man, okay. No problem and everything. And he walked away, right? I can easily say from that day, that made me way more cold hearted than anything I've ever seen in my life. Right. Because to me, I was like, this person who looks like me would harm my grandpa. Right. For what? He didn't he didn't do nothing. Nothing. He didn't do nothing. And literally that made me more of people want to say like stupid shit tell you or cool term savage or all that other shit. That made me more of an animal than anything I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Like and it sucks because like I haven't done like a lot of crazy shit, but I've done some fucked up shit, right? And I look back at it and it always sucks because I'm like, I instantly re- regret it afterwards. I'm like, I shouldn't have done that or whatever. Or like, especially if I get mad at something or a situation because I can't control my anger from shit like that. And that's where I feel like we do suffer from certain types of things because in the hood, it's okay to get mad. Getting mad is cool. Right. Like, so normal. It's normal. Yeah. So like, if like when niggas mad, you can you like you we, we've all been to it. When niggas mad, and they be like, oh, "This nigga heated, man. This nigga, oh, he about right. to go off and everything like that." And it's like it's celebrate, like yeah, right. let's do some shit, or whatever. Right. And then like now, it's like you can't do that, and that's why yeah. it's always funny because when when you tell me stories about like you being out and shit happening. <laughs> I look at you like, and my mom like, this nigga, wow. <laughs> I'm like, I would not be doing that. But of course, I still do stupid shit. So I'm like, oh, it's just, it's just where we came from. I'm learning the older I get, and I forget where did I get, who, where I got this term from. But uh, it was like, he's an intellectual bully. And I remember him, somebody hearing somebody say that about somebody else, and I was like, oh shit, I want to be like that because he would handle confrontation and he would make somebody feel so stupid. And he was so smart. So he'd be like, so what you're telling me is this. And the person would start stuttering like, no, no, what I'm saying is, and then he would just like make them feel so dumb. And I'm like, I want to get to that point. No physical, nothing physical, no harm. Just being able to outwit somebody. You're really good at that shit because you're you're quick on your feet. (laughs) Me, like somebody makes me mad, I'm just like, like baby, go fuck you to hit. Like, just like I want to get mad. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mark's like quick with it. I'm just, I'm trying to I get to that point. It's because it's, I don't know. You, you beat someone up. A lot of shit could happen to you. But if you just, mm-hmm. if you make someone feel dumb. Using their own words. It lasts forever. It lasts so much longer. <laughs> They'll be thinking about it every now and then for years. Yeah. Fuck that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Fuck but that e- guy. But yeah. even on a smaller scale, the shit that is normal because, yeah, like on our street, I remember that kid that used to stand outside that house that lived across the street. Oh, yeah. I don't like him. Yeah, but you know, w- there was a few. I hope you know which, which one I'm talking about. But like, he got shot. I don't know mm-hmm. if you were there. Yeah, he got shot on the corner. And I had heard the gunshot and I went outside and I saw him like laying on the, uh, oh, on the floor. And I remember just like, like back, right back in my house and sitting on the couch because what the fuck am I gonna do? I knew if <laughs> I went the couch, outside, on the floor below the windows. Right? <laughs> I knew if I went outside, my dad would be like, "Get the fuck inside the house." Yeah. And I was already like, you know, old enough to understand like that it has nothing yeah. to do with me. There's nothing I could do. I guarantee you, anybody in my industry now, or like let's say somebody that grew up in a, a nicer area, would be outside. What's going on? Call the cops. <laughs> fuck, are you fucking like don't get involved. Yeah. Do not get involved. Don't let your face be seen. Right. And to and to us, that's so normal. But to them, it's like, well, we gotta help. We gotta call the police. And I'm like, no. <laughs> or like I remember being in a. Uh, I used to go to Sac State, and uh, our first apartment, there was some party going on downstairs with this like Latin fraternity, and uh, we bad bitches. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> we were upstairs just having fun, and um, we had we had this recruit, big old Samoan dude uh, from uh, East Oakland. Okay. And so East Oakland, you know, if anybody doesn't know, his hood is fucking like real, but like you know, he was the coolest motherfucker I ever met. Man, we were hanging out, just chopping it up, big Samoan dude. And uh, 
Latin dudes downstairs started getting into some fight. They were woofing. They were from Sacramento. Sacramento is a nice area, so like they were just woofing. Nobody was actually gonna fight. Right. This dude, what was his name? Reagan, I think his name was. Reagan goes downstairs, and just because he wanted to, got into it with like some Latin dude. Just for fun, he was like, hey, man, hey, what's going on, man? And the Latin dude is hella drunk, and he's like, well, this motherfucker's tripping, and this motherfucker's tripping. And Reagan was like, oh, yeah? And goes, bah! And knocks this motherfucker out. And I mean, like, a, you know, for those who don't know a lot of Samoans, Samoans are, like, the coolest motherfuckers ever. And Do the, not get into a fight. And the boy. biggest motherfucker ever. the biggest, ever. like, strongest. Fuck with Samoans. Right. <laughs> like, they're the coolest people. Just don't cross them, and they'll be your best fucking friends. I love, yeah. shout out to any Polynesian people out there. Drops this motherfucker. Everybody around me, the Latin people, were losing their minds. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, Yo, shit. Smokey. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought the shit was hilarious. And meanwhile, everybody's like calling the police and losing the shit. And I realized at that moment, like, oh. I'm not home. This is not normal <laughs> to these people. So why or, is everyone calling the cops? You'll get up eventually. Right, you'll be fine. <laughs> And it, or another quick instance uh, in Sacramento again, like, for, keep in mind, this is the first time I'm, I'm, I'm outside of Long Beach. I'm outside of, like, the hood. And I hate saying it like that, but... The right. Hood. So I'm in school, and we're talking about, like, growing up, and I remember with, uh, they were talking about, like, budgets and, like, how you, uh, how to budget a, a home. And I was like, oh, well, we spent this much amount of food on a, a month. And I think it was, like, I don't know, a couple hundred. And every white person around me was like, no, man, you must be mistaken. There's no way you guys survived on this much amount of money a month. And I'm like, no, yeah, we absolutely did. And they're like, there's no way. And I'm like, trust me, we just ate a lot of fucking pasta and tortillas and a lot of shit with our meals. Like, this is what it was. Right. And they'd be like, oh, you just watch too much TV, man. And I'm like, mm, wow. Yeah. These, like, my life is normal to me and to them it's so foreign. And again, I'm not trying to say that I was hood. I never banged. I never sold drugs. I never did anything wrong. I was a good kid that just grew up in like a kind of shitty place. That's the thing that is funny because none of us like gang bang, mm -hmm. sold drugs, none of that shit. But we all were around people, were friends with people. Uh, in my case, I have family mm -hmm. who does this shit. Um, and it is normal to us right. and everything like that. Uh, funny thing you said about the kid who got shot. The same story I told about the guy getting shot, um, we heard the shots and everything, right? Mm -hmm. So people start running out, and then um, I go and literally, I walked to my mom's room real slow, and I was like, oh, yeah, I guess someone got shot and everything. And she was like, and she was like, well, and then my my older sister was like, what? We have to call the police or whatever, whatever. My mom was like, if you don't sit your ass down, <laughs> get on that damn phone and say nothing to nobody. Yeah. <laughs> but she was so, my older sister, she's really weird. Um, She's she's very, uh, I don't want to say white, but she's very white, even though we grew up in the same place. It's, I don't get it. But um, yeah. she like, she tries to be a civilian in the worst moment. So you, right. you just can't do that. But um, You just she, made me think of one more story. Can okay, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Real go. quick, before the next question. Um... Uh, <laughs> little house parties and shit that we used to go to in high school and we would get him my boy Eric's shitty little like old like a 1970s Malibu Damn, shitty nigga, shitty car yeah you was in high school in the 90s you said 70s no the fucking car I know what I'm saying like oh, yeah, yeah, damn yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nigga was broke it was a shitty <laughs> shitty car right a... sorry and then <laughs> we you know we go to these house parties and inevitably some shit happens whether right. it gets shot up or and, and for anybody that doesn't understand the term like, nobody would actually get shot. Somebody would just go to the party to shoot, shoot into the yeah. sky to break up the party, which is just a really fucked up thing to do. <laughs> but it was normal. It's very really mean. <laughs> very mean. And then, so anyway, we're, we're, we're this was a normal thing. And then, what the fuck is his name? Somebody new hung out with us one day. And, uh, you hear that sound? Yeah. Latin, there you go. Latin dude uh, came and hung out with us one night, and the party got shot up. But this time, you could actually see the motherfucker, and I think he might have been shooting at somebody, but you could see the shit. Right. Everybody breaks. We all get in the car. This motherfucker was in the car hyperventilating, like, he had a fucking gun. Like, he had a gun. Did you guys see it? And we're like, yeah. <laughs> like, you want to go to Norm's? Like, we were going to go to Norm's. <laughs> and we're like, 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 and don't mistake it. Like, we're all shook, of course. But it's like, well, yeah, like, we're not, we're safe. We're not yeah. there no more. Let's go eat. But he was like hyperventilating, and I'm like, it was like these these little moments in my life where I was like, oh, wow, this shit is not normal. So yeah, it's PTSD like a motherfucker because we have to relearn how to be normal in the world as an adult. When that was going on, was there a party was that was like, man, quit being a bitch? 
Yeah. Oh, fuck it. Oh, hell That's yeah. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's what I'm talking oh about. Oh, my God. That just blew my mind. <laughs> like, That's what we go through, and it's like, that's no, he uh, was he was in the right the whole way. We were all crazy. <laughs> like, we're oh all my insane. God, that just blew my mind because that's exactly what I thought. And everybody was like, yo, shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Damn, that shit. That's the weird shit about Damn. everything that I guess Damn. like happens in, in our area. And that's why I feel like. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Sorry, that just like dropped me right now. That was good. Like, it's something that I feel like the situations like the Nipsey shit should spawn more of a conversation of, like, what we're doing mm. in our communities and shit. Because, honestly, when you leave the hood, if you have, if you, I hope people really do get a chance to leave the hood. Mm. If you work hard enough, too, you can, right? So when you leave the hood and you go to these areas, because right now we're in a white-ass area, the people are, they're so friendly. <laughs> like, it's weird, because <laughs> you know that they don't really fuck with you, right? You know that. But they're friendly, you don't have a fear of your shit being stolen. You don't have a fear of, like, you getting jumped, you getting, uh, you in some shit or whatever. I literally, when we came over here, I literally, like, the first couple of days, I felt bad. I literally felt bad. And, like, I had told my girl I was depressed for, like, two weeks. And then I was, like, I think I'm having, like, that whole, that whole like, survivor's remorse type shit or whatever because I was here and I'm, like, all right, my mom's still over in that area, right, or whatever. I'm like, I still go in that. Like, all my friends are still over there and everything like that. When when we moved over here, one of my boys had literally, he literally said, he was like, damn, he's like, he's like you just going to leave now? He's like, you got this white-ass area and everything wow. like that. And I'm like, it's 20 minutes away. Right. <laughs> 20 right. minutes away and everything. But I really did feel like there was like a point I was like, why am I here? Why am I here? Like, and then even he'll he'll tell you when we were looking for places and everything like that. I had wanted to stay close still yeah. to the hood. And that's something that I feel like now, since I now I've calmed down, everything's like normal. I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? Like, yeah. because when once you do get out of a situation where you're in some shit where literally people are getting shot. We lived next to strippers. And I think a couple prostitutes. I know for a fact a couple prostitutes actually. Like we lived next to them. And it was normal. We were just like, yeah, you know, like I would literally see this girl who had a fat ass. Shout out to her. <laughs> um, My first fatty. Yeah, like, <laughs> Dwayne's children book. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would literally see her. I would come home, like being with my girl, whatever, three, four in the morning. This chick in a tight ass dress and everything looking bomb. She leaving. And I'm like, Damn. but she's walking. And I'm like. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm just like, but then you would see her in the daytime. She was fine. She right. was like a normal person. Wasn't anything crazy about it and everything like that. And it was just like, it was normal shit. Like, you, you adapted. You adapted to your environment. And then when you move out of it, you're like, in a way, institutionalized. It's like, right. motherfuckers that get out of jail where you're like, I just don't feel comfortable here, man. I feel like motherfuckers are out to get me. And I'm like, you just got adapted. We're humans. We're like meant to adapt to our environment and to survive it. So it just feels weird when you're out of it. I would talk to your your, your brother when he would be when he would go to you we go to your mom's, right? Mm -hmm. And you would uh you would be over there, I'd be like, I can't like I just can't be over here. I'm like, it's too many white people. It's not the same, man. I'm like, I love the hood. Like the hood is everything to me. Mm -hmm. And now looking back, I was like, that is dumb. <laughs> that is so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> like there's and then I'm not trying to like shit on our area at all because yeah. honestly still to this day when I do go back and it's weird like it's like a weird it. it's like a weird comfortable oh, feeling it's like man. oh like like I'll legit just drive through it and I'll be like oh man let me yeah. stop over here real I think quick. about moving back every time I go to, go to my dad's house I'm just like oh that's fucking nice over here people <laughs> man, say hi to each other because <laughs> like, yeah. when when there's when it's like a good day in the hood yeah. um <laughs> you feel like all the love yeah, like as much love as they could give it also, like, intensifies the hate. So, like, it just kind of, like, as much hate as you hear about and, like, crazy shit, that love is, like, also there. And that's a perfect segue to my question of what is more important? The community as a whole and trying to uplift your community or your own personal, uh, I guess, your own personal growth and, like, your family? Ah, fuck, man. Like, what is, what is more important? Fuck. If I'm just being real... My so family, but I try to do both, and fuck, man, like, the more we talk, the more I, I, I keep respecting Nipsey more and more and more, because what the, 
He was literally doing both. Like he was it, living in both worlds. He had both feet. And yeah, both. and that shit. And he was so hard. firmly planted in that shit. Yeah. That's why. It's, and again, I did not follow this dude's music. I just like would see him in interviews, and I'm like, this motherfucker's special. Um, but I just, I just don't know what to do because I see my wife and my son, and I'm like, fuck everybody else. As long as you guys are good, I'm happy. But I love my neighborhood so much, and I love my city so much. And anybody who does, who, who hasn't lived in Long Beach or isn't from Long Beach doesn't understand how special it is. Everybody's hometown is special, but Long Beach is has a little bit extra, man. Like the amount of like NFL, we have the most NFL players uh, yeah. out of Long Beach Poly. Um, just like baseball players, everything. Like we just, it's a special place. We're pretty diverse. Yeah, and there's so much love here. If you come from Long Beach, you're automatically like you become kin. Yeah. Um. So I don't know, man, because I want to do so good for the for the community and I want to help out the next generation. But God damn, I'm not gonna risk my family for it. So, what do you do? Did you guys see that video of Nipsey slapping the shit out of uh, yeah. the security guard yeah. a while back? <laughs> And I look at that shit and I laugh at it. But I remember being like, oh, Nipsey, come on, man. Like, don't. Like, that dude was just trying to do his job. But then, like, I'm watching it. I'm like, nah. Yeah, that's, what, that's what's supposed to happen. Right. Like, ain't, that's what I'm See, talking about. And it's, again, it's that two, it's two worlds because my first instinct is like, ha ha. <laughs> but I'm like, no. <laughs> like, I'm like, nah, man. He's just a dude trying to do his job, too. So, like, what do you do? And there's, I feel like, <laughs> I, feel like yourself. <laughs> I feel like, I honestly feel like, and this is going to sound like, it's going to sound kind of wild, but I feel like once you're out of the hood, technically, you're not a part of the community anymore. That's true. If you really want to be like real technical about it, as soon as you leave or whatever, now you can like. I wear this Long Beach hoodie and everything. When I go to work, everybody know I'm from Long Beach and everything. I don't give a fuck, right? Mm-hmm. So, but I understand that my new area code and everything is not Long Beach. Yeah. So I can't talk mm-hmm. that same shit like, yeah. nah, like I'm like, nah, fuck that. I'm in here and everything like that because I'm not. Because you're really not, yeah. So to me, if we're keeping it real, I'm being fake if I do do some shit like that. Because that's not, because I can, like, I can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, I was out here and then my take my ass. Mm-hmm. Down a whole other freeway yeah. in a safe ass area. That's not cool. Right. Right. It's like white girls repping Brooklyn. Yeah. It's like you're not from fucking Brooklyn. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> like, or you're from the fucking gentrified Brooklyn. Right. Maybe. Right. Maybe. Right, right, right. Um, but you know, I feel like to me that's being fake. Right. So, I feel like at a point, honestly, we have to learn to let go of these places if we want to grow. But that does not mean turning your back on these places. Yeah. I think that's where we, because people have that whole, I guess, that uh, they feel like once you leave it and you don't come back, that fuck you, you'll sell out, like we raised you and everything like that, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, and kind of to Steve Harvey's point, yeah, like if you're making it and you're being successful, you can't help the next man if y'all both in jail. You can't help the next man, you know what I'm saying, if... Y'all both dealing with cases and shit. That's not going to help him. But what can help him is you can honestly, which is uh, like how I look at you, it's crazy because like we know you, obviously, right? But I'm pretty sure there's people that go on your Instagram. There's people that go on your Twitter and they see you and they don't understand like in your in your fucking like at name, it's LB. Man, like it's yeah. the first the first thing you see is not your name. It's yeah. LB. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's a kid right now. Who's like, oh, Manny Montana's from Long Beach. He acts. I can do just, I can follow his yeah. blueprint and everything like that. Like, we don't even understand that we're leaving blueprints, which is crazy because, like, me and Mark getting messages now from people being like, oh, we want to do this and we think you guys are dope. And, like, how do you do this? And it's like, uh, what? Really? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm like, like what? Like, like, and it's just crazy because I feel like I would be stupid if then, if I'm, you know, talking like I'm talking every day. To you guys, and we're doing these hot takes, we're doing doing this podcast, but then I turn around and I take my dumb ass Mm -hmm. back to the hood (laughs) and do some stupid shit. All right. You know what? As you were talking, I started thinking more uh, about what you were saying and about, I feel like Nipsey was living completely in both worlds. Right. And I feel like the only way to do it is to kind of live in both worlds. Right. And in comparison would be to like... The area we're at now is very close to Long Beach, but it's not Long Beach, so... At all. And also, like, I could help from here. I can't help it from in the hood. 
and like trying to be hood and like doing all this. I'd rather have like um, it's like if I was a if I owned a company and I needed to know what was cool. I'm not gonna go off of what I think is cool. I'm gonna hire some young kid. I'm gonna hire young kids who still know what's up. I'm gonna get take their opinions. I'm gonna listen to them and I'm gonna trust them. And I'm gonna do that. I can't live in that world. I can't fucking go and hang around high schoolers. It's fucking weird. <laughs> like I need to hear. I need to be able to to have people. R. Kelly man. <laughs> <laughs> so you need. That, I feel like now that we're talking about this, I feel like you need to kind of like be in both worlds, but you can't be in it fully. And I feel like Nipsey was. Maybe keeping it too real, and still being involved with everybody that 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 he grew up with, and I feel like there might have been a better way to help. But the way he did it was was right for him, and the way it worked out, it just happened to end up in a whole fucked up way. So I'm sorry that it ended it that way, but maybe the way to do it is that you, you can't know? you can't help like uh, being I guess like in that area, the bad area. You're just trying to survive. Like, you can't think of, a, like, a, a plan to make this place better. So you have to get out, be in a peaceful area for the first time in your life, get used to, like, sleeping where it's just quiet as fuck. Yeah. You know, no helicopters going all night. It takes a while. It does take a while. Um, and there you can start formulating plans of, like, how to help this place out, the place that you were out. Because if yeah. you don't, then all you're doing is just running around surviving, and no one's making a plan when they're just surviving. Yeah, I remember Pac saying, like, he was like, man, before I got shot, I, I knew, he was like, I knew a black person would never shoot me. And then, um, like, you know, the first people that, like, tried to rob him in that elevator in New York, black. two black dudes. Yep. And he said it completely changed his whole fucking mind state. And, again, it's not like he turned his back on black people everywhere. It was just like, like, oh, shit, now I have to be more cautious. The same people that give Snoop shit for living in, what, Chino, Chino Hills? Yeah. And I'm like... What do you expect the man to do? Stay on the east side and like have to look over his shoulder all the time to keep it real in your point of view? And still bang twenties. Like right. which like Come on man. Like he has a family. He's got a career. He's a he's an icon. Like let the man live. And that's the type of shit how deep it gets in places like Long Beach and everything. Cause there was a point where uh Snoop was he was kicked out. Like of the yeah, quote yeah, unquote. Sorry. He was kicked out of the hood and he couldn't come back to Long Beach and shit like that. And that's where I feel like um, there, that's always going to be that fear when you do make it that you can't come back. Mm-hmm. And again, if we're going based off how we were raised or whatever, can no nigga tell me where I can and can't right. go? <laughs> like, that's not going to happen, yeah. right? But then you get in those situations where you don't realize that sometimes going back is way more dangerous than you thought it was when you were originally there. Right. Even though you know everybody there, that love that you had when you were there, it might not be the same when you go back. Nope. Because now people are either in the same situation or in worse yeah. situations, and they starve, and you come around here and fucking niggas acting and shit on TV, right. you want to talk about what's up, and like, let's yeah. go let's go get lunch. Let me they- fuck you in your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> like, they observe, like, speaking on, on, on my point of view, I feel like they observe me in a different way. I feel like motherfuckers <laughs> that see me are, like, trying to figure out if I'm Hollywood or if I'm still cool. Right. And I feel like anybody... A normal person doesn't have to get that, doesn't have to be, like, observed that way. Like, I feel like if you walk into some place, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's just the way from Long Beach. Me, it's not like, oh, that's Manny who, who's from Long Beach, but let me see what he's like now. And I hate that. I hate that I have to prove that I'm still normal <laughs> and that I'm not Hollywood, whatever the fuck that means. So you're just looked upon differently. I think it's also jealousy, like, jealousy twist uh, a person's mind and we will start making shit up about that person that they're jealous of. Because, they, they, I mean, with you especially, they see, they think because they see you on TV every day, you play these characters, they think they know you. Mm-hmm. They think they know who you are. So now they, when they like they see you in person, it's really jealous. Oh, that, that motherfucker acts like like that guy on TV. Right. So that's, 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 he's changed, man. He's changed <laughs> because he's playing like, he's playing a character. Yeah. Not a real person. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's really just that jealousy because if, if the person is thinking about that all day or even just like the couple hours you're seeing them and they just get... More mad, more mad. Yeah. They start spiraling, and then they fucking come back and yeah, they create that's what, ha- what happens with Nipsey. Like I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Like I wish it was a conspiracy thing because then yeah. it would unify everybody. It'd be easier to digest. Yeah, that was. too. But I, I seriously think it was just. And I was talking about this with Joanne. Like he's just. Uh, he went probably went back to his car, got super jealous, got like insanely yeah. enraged, and judgment was gone. Yeah. He did what he did. Made a horrible decision at a horrible moment. And that's the. And I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for saying this, but whatever. Um, It's a lot of things that you realize growing up that 
at least in the areas that we come from or whatever, you know, they like to preach these things like, you know, you know the biggest enemy is, uh, is the white man, quote unquote, or the government and everything like that. Growing up and to this day, to some degree, whatever, the biggest enemy is a nigga who look just like you. Like, and it's sad. It's really sad to say because, like, uh, you know, I've said this and I have no problem saying it or whatever. Like, I'm, I understand the whole Black Lives Matter thing and, and all that shit or whatever. But coming from where I come from, I don't give a fuck about none of that. Like, my life matters. Right. That's it. My life matters and the people I grew up with. They matter. Like, yeah. once we get out, then we can talk this whole Black Lives Matter shit or whatever. But until then, I don't want to hear none of that. Because that is not going to help me get out of anything right now. Which, again, it sucks. It might come off selfish. It might, but the people that are from the places that we're from, they don't, you know, we don't have that time. We don't have that time to be like, oh, you know, um, hey, brother, you know, let me give you a couple dollars. <laughs> no one's going to, anybody going to give you shit. All right. To be blunt. You it's know, sad, but it's true. Like, you it's, don't have time for social issues. Those mainstream right. social issues. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. So that's why there's... And again, now that would be like a government thing because, of course, they put us in these places where we have to feel like that. But at the end of the day, once we're in there, you know, there is no actual sense of community anymore. All right? That's why people join gangs because that's the community. For a sense of community. <laughs> no, for real, though. Like, that's, know, yeah. like it, it sucks, but that's why. Like... Because you, if you can't walk the streets without, come on, all of us sitting here have been banged on. All of us yeah. sitting here have been in some shit, right, or whatever, right? right? Yeah. And, you know, and it's like, at a point, either you going to do what we did and be like, all right, let's keep persevering, you know, get through it. Eventually, we'll get out of here. Or you're going to go on the offensive and be like, you know, fuck that. All right. Like, oh, yeah, my cousin from here, I'm about to be from there, too. All right. That's going to keep me safe and everything like that. And now we're just continuing the cycle. Let me ask you guys a question. I was deadly this uh, the other night. Um, I was watching some show and like it was showing a lot of Black Panther stuff, and I was like, man, it looked like at least from 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 looking at it from from a different generation. I'm looking at it and I'm like, man, it looked like the height of Black Power. I felt like everybody, you know, the afros, the style, the music, the dance, and I, I was like, man, I felt like everybody was so super proud to be black. And it was cool to be black and like they were making such strong waves and moves. And then crack was introduced, right? And I right. feel like if we're if we're speaking in a general term and like I know there's so much more to it, so please don't take me so literally. That's what ended like that movement, but, yeah. right? The seventies? Mm -hmm. Am I fair in saying that? Yep. In a in a general way. Right. And I feel like nowadays, like, you know, I love the the natural hair, the, how, you know, black folks. Are, it, I feel like it's the same thing that's happening. I feel like it's coming being back. black is is beautiful. It, it always was beautiful right. to me, but I feel like now in a in a you know you know in a universal way, in a stereotypical way, like now it's it's beautiful to be that, and like black women are wearing their hair naturally, which I love. It's cool to be that. The music is becoming popular. Everything is going. Is there? What's the next thing that's gonna, or what's the next thing that's gonna try to take us down? What's the next thing? Like, is it going to be drugs? Is it going to be shit like what happened to Nipsey? Is it going to be trying to take down our leaders? Is it going to be? What's it going to be? And, and and I'm like trying to keep an eye out for it and I'm trying to look for it. It's but when it hits the way it did, like with crack, motherfuckers didn't know it was going to be an epidemic. They didn't know that people were going to be busting this shit and throwing this shit into the community. So what is it going to be and what do we have to look out for? I think it's going to be way more subtle than, than crack was. Because crack, it was, like, maybe the yeah. first time, like, with the Black Panther thing, it was really, the, like, the unification of black people, right? Like, everyone was pretty unified and, like, we're going to fight for each other and our yeah. people, blah, blah, blah. Crack came along, broke that unification up, starting to build back up again. They can't do it how they did with crack because that's so, like, now people know that, that, that plan, that strategy. Right, and everything's being videotaped. Exactly. So... I feel like it's gonna be something like the Kardashians, like that's gonna take oh, you down. Shit. Like you're gonna, you're gonna, they're gonna take everything that they say, like that, that black people are doing naturally. Like they've always known it, it's cool, but you know, mainstream has always been like, no, 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 that that's that's ghetto, that that's that's bad. If you if you if you have this hairstyle, then you're a bad person. Mm. But if the Kardashians do it, they take the yeah, style, they cool. make it cool. Now they take all the power that they've created. Right. So it's going to be something like that. It, it's going to be something so subtle, something so subtle. And you probably got these fucking genius, like, think tanks thinking about how to fucking break up people and, like, 
putting people in places, you know? Yeah. Because doing so many something, it was just like, I just, like, there's these people that they're not good. Like, they, you know people way better than them, but they, they become stars overnight, like the Yes Jewels. They become stars overnight in the black community. Mm. Yeah. And they take the money, they take the money, and then as soon as they have the money, what do they do? They start saying the N-word. They start shitting on. They start saying about, like, how I'm like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Moles. Blah. Moles, exactly. Yeah. So I think it's it's going to be the mole route. That's how it's going to... That's their plan. Um, For me, I think it's already happened, or it's already happening. And I don't think people realize that the biggest, um, I guess, threat is actually the shit right here. Oh, yeah. This is the biggest threat. Because... um. We stick to this shit so much now that we refuse to go outside. We refuse to actually interact in our communities. We, we refuse to try to learn something from history. Uh, and what we choose to do is actually use this shit right. to uh, clout chase. And we use this shit to uh, make statements or, you know, make very uh, uninformed uh, political views and right. thoughts and shit like that, and it's literally just for people like me, Manny, Mark to watch and be like, "Oh, that's all it's for." Yeah. Like, and it's just for money. This shit is going to end up being the next thing that's going to wipe out. Fuck. Uh, fucking, you know, uh, the the sense of community we have because as long as people continue to, which I hope y'all stop doing, stop watching that fucking uh, Nipsey shooting. Stop. That's disgusting. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. But because, and it's crazy because I've seen this shit, right? There'll be someone will post, you know, a, a little tribute to him or whatever. And then you'll read a couple of comments. You see this nigga with a link. Like, I don't want to hear your song, bro. Right. Like, right. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that shit right now or whatever, right? But it's clear that people are so desensitized because of shit like this. Mm-hmm. Seeing an, that's why I can't watch that shit. Like, and I, I know Mark, you told me the whole like now there's like a super zoomed in version of it. Yeah. I can't watch that, yeah. man. Like seeing like I, like imagine how you would feel if you could literally see the moment Pac died. You 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 don't want to no, watch no, that no, shit. Fuck no. Like yeah. and like Nipsey honestly was our generation's Pac. Like and I and I know people are like you know he was his own thing too he was but Nipsey was the person who said it in his bars, twenty twenty two pop, like and everything right so. I don't want to see someone who was that great. Be treated like a dog. Yeah, because then that's all they are. That's all they'll ever be. Yeah, that's the shit that you're gonna keep reposting and people think it's fucking funny. Like I saw people. Um, there was a dude who had, I don't know what the fuck he was, a dude or a girl, but posted um, under the video that someone posted of Nipsey getting shot. They posted a fucking meme of like some dude who was like a uh, season on the ground. And they were like, this, this is how Nipsey was when he was. Uh, and I'm like, bro, honestly, like, what was the point of that? Yeah. You you really thought you, you was going to get some likes, some retweets or whatever, right? And this is the, this is the shit that's going to end us because... It makes people take sides. It makes people, uh, instead of mourning, now it's like, instead of fucking being an actual person, a human being for a couple of minutes, now we have to, oh, it's a conspiracy. Let's push a push a narrative. It's the white man. We, we got to stop this and everything like that. And it sucks because this shit doesn't make us be human anymore. This shit literally makes us be robots. Yeah, but it's a necessary evil because all the police brutality and shootings that are happening would not be a thing if not if for it not being such a big social media thing and being right. videotaped and being shown. So I'm like, I don't know where it's going to come from. I'm trying to keep my eyes open for it, but man, I hope we're ready for it. Oh, also, for, for you niggas who do crime, this shit is also getting you caught, too. Mm-hmm. But whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, How do you know that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um... It's it's the balance between like uh, social justice issues like police brutality and then losing your empathy because you get so numb to seeing it all the time. Which is like what people say like, how many school shootings have we gone through now since that first one? Yeah. Now when it happens, it's like it's like oh man, let me oh read, right over there. I did yeah. my job. Yeah, exactly that or like it happened again. Oh well, right. that's how that happens. The typical like they're gonna fight about gun laws now and nothing's gonna happen and then yeah. next story's gonna hit. No one cares about that anymore. Right. Manny, so. you're a person on social media who's pretty vocal about how you feel about certain issues and certain political views and things like that. Mm. Uh, Nipsey was too. Um, do you think 
does it ever do you ever think or is there do you have a fear that sometimes the things that you put out in the in the universe or in the air are going to come back to you somehow somewhere like there is there some is there some weird white dude who's like oh this motherfucker (laughs) i can't this brown (laughs) you know yes and no that i i post a lot because i don't post as much as i want to right right if you only knew how much i wanted to post about and how much shit i wanted to say about people right but again and this is me not keeping it real but also keeping it real I can't post and say everything that I want to do because it's going to offend somebody. And that person that I offend might be somebody that I'm going to be working for or a network that I'm going to be working for. So, and I think, I feel like a lot of people need to listen to what I'm saying right now because I, I, I think you could learn something from it. Not everybody needs to know your opinion. It doesn't make you any more valid. It doesn't make you any more intelligent. It doesn't make you anything. Like, sometimes you could just tell your boys in private. You don't have to go and fucking tweet about it. You don't have to go on Instagram about it. It's not going to change the world. It's not a way... It's, I know you might think it's a release, but it's not. So, like, I'll, I'll hear about a shooting or I'll, I'll hear about somebody being gunned down and I want to go and take it to the fucking Instagram and, and, and Twitter. And I'm like, but what's that really going to do? I could better put my efforts towards, like, helping, you know the next generation and helping kids that I coach and helping kids that I mentor, helping like young people that I'll talk to randomly on Twitter or Instagram. It's not helping just going and fucking talking shit about it. And I I do, I get scared about posting something that might come back on me, whether career, career wise, personally, family wise, I don't want to get guy. I don't want to offer some bullshit, some opinion that I had. So I'm very cautious of what I'm posting, but I haven't even posted anything about Nipsey because again, I don't know Nipsey's music. I just kind of know him of through interviews, and I just always felt a kinship with him. Right. Um. So like, I'm not gonna go and and, uh, and put an RIP on my page just because it's the cool thing to do, and everybody's doing it. I just want to be aware of what's going on, so I want to hear the full story, and maybe later on I'll post some dope shit that nobody ever knew about Nipsey once I learn about it. But I don't want to be that outrage culture. I don't want to be the one that oh I heard this bam that's my opinion now too. Think about what you're doing before you do it, man, because that's just gonna live on forever. Then I just take my time with it. So whatever I post, it's usually things that I'm, I, I still stand by. And I could go to my page right now and be like, yep, I still believe in that. Yep, I still agree with that. So, Mark, you got any questions before? Um, I had a question from back earlier in the conversation. Would you uh, take living like in a, in a fake friendly neighborhood to where you don't, you don't really know where you stand in the neighborhood? Or would you rather be in like in a keeping a real neighborhood where like you know everything that's going on, you know how everything works? What yeah. would you? How would you prefer to live? Am I more in danger in that like I know everybody? It's real. As much danger it is like growing. I, I mean, growing up where we grew up, so like mm. that that amount, I guess. And I could still live how I want to live and like live in the kind of house I want to live in. And- um, you would live how you were living back when you were when we were living back there. <sighs> So it'd be like this fake friendly place where it's like a little, it's a little better, you know, you gotta worry about stuff, but you have no idea where you stand with these people mm. at all. So like basically living in where I, my neighborhood now or living where like, yeah, I exactly. was growing up. Like, fuck. Wait, is, is it, is he still the same? Like, are we all still the same? Or is it like going, is am it one I like. Known? Am I like an actor that's known? Um, or am I just living like a normal nine to five? Let's, let's say just a normal nine to five. Oh, oh. yeah. I'd live in, well, shit. <laughs> I don't fuck. I don't like living next to niggas. <laughs> <laughs> you do it. <laughs> um, fuck. Good question, man. To be honest, because we're trained to like try to get out, I feel like I still would be trying to live in like the neighborhood that I'm living in now. But if I had my choice as far as people and the way how, how happy I feel, I feel like I would live where we, where we grew up. Right. I feel like I would live in dad's hood. But it's all nostalgia, man. Because everybody loves their hood once they leave it. Everybody does, man. And I remember even, and not even on a hood thing, I remember dating this girl who was from Chicago and moved to L.A. And then she would always, like, talk about, oh, Chicago's so much better because of this. And she, oh, I miss Chicago. She'd always be so homesick. And then ended up moving back. Two months later, I heard she moved back to L.A. (laughs) Because it's just nostalgia, man. You just remember what it was like in high school when you had all your friends and everything was popping and this was your entire world. Once you move somewhere else and see how big the world is, your hood does not seem that cool anymore. So I feel like if I did live where we grew up, I'd, I'd be like, man, fuck this shit. Take me back to where the grass is a little greener and the air smells a little better. So, yeah, I think I would still go for, like, 
not knowing my neighbors too well and like living in my own world yeah yeah, yeah i would yeah. take freak friendly too just because <laughs> yeah. it's easy like you, you, they they the same way that you don't know what they they're about mm-hmm. they have no idea what you're about yeah, so you, you could move however you want to be yeah. you could be who you ever want to be like be this character or whatever yeah just for fun like you know who cares yeah and just converse with your own family and yeah. like friends like yeah 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 do you like uh can i take the people from the old neighborhood and put no. them <laughs> Oh, so yeah. What's the point of the whole question? Oh, then I'm gonna take the I'll take the fake friendly too. I mean, it's just yeah. it's 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 at the end of the day, it's just peace of mind. I know that whatever y'all doing, I don't care, and whatever I'm doing, y'all don't care. Yeah, so, it's pretty nice. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it, I, I, it sucks because you you wish it was like that where we came from because it should be honestly. There's no, there's no real difference besides a whole bunch of shit going on, but yeah. Everyone knows everything, or they want to know everything. <laughs> yeah, in an ideal world, it'd be fucking awesome to have, like, a block party, and you know all your neighbors, and I can go and borrow a fucking, like, gardening Cup tool. of sugar or something. Yeah. <laughs> Some TV shit. <laughs> like, it'd be awesome to do that, but that's not reality. Who the fuck borrowing sugar in 2019? Well, I, right? used <laughs> but, I used to, but then again, I live, like, two houses down from my grandma, so. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, shit, we used to do that, huh? Like, yeah. Get some oil. Yeah. Get some fucking cooking oil from your grandma. <laughs> but, all right, so to wrap this all up, do you, is there a way to, uh, quote unquote, uh, uplift the community and be who you are today? Yeah. And I think it's what I said. And I'm glad we had this talk because I, I finally came to a realization that I think it's that you can't, you just can't be fully in both worlds. And I think if you do, you're just going to be burning the candle at both ends and eventually it's going to be over. So I feel like you need to find a balance. And I think I'm at a pretty good balance. I, but trust me, I do want to do so much more for Long Beach eventually. But right now I have my son and I want him and my wife to be my entire world. And I want all my attention to go to them. I never want them. I remember uh, Pac saying that as a kid, him and his mom would get into it so much because he felt like she cared more about the people than her people. Right. And I never want my son to feel that way. So I feel like it's that. I feel like you need to find a good common ground. But you have to do it. And if you turn your back on where you came from or if you turn your back... And it, well, first of all, I want to say, even if you're not from the hood, you should try to help the hood. Like, Definitely. I have friends that don't give a shit about what black people are going through or what Latin people are going through because it doesn't affect them. And that's fucked up. Don't go on fucking Twitter. And I have friends. And I feel like if you watch this, you know who I'm talking to. Don't go on Twitter, don't go on Instagram and try to like promote, you know, we need to be better, we need to do this and we need to do that. But then tell me, well, you know, Manny, like, I just don't want you to get in trouble. So, you know, maybe just like, you know, smile more when you like go into a grocery store or maybe, you know, just like, I feel like you come off as threatening. So maybe like, you know, just go into a place and like, don't be as threatening. And I'm like, I'm not a threat. Take your hood because off. You, exactly. <laughs> smile more, sweetheart. Right. I'm like, so you're just telling me to dance. You're yeah. the fucking problem and you don't realize that. You think that racism is just some 1950s bullshit where like you know you're just trying like like black people are trying to sit at the same counter as white people it's totally different there's so much underlying shit that happens that when i tell my white friends they're like man you sure you're not like you sure it's not you that's looking for this trouble and i'm like why would i go looking for this shit all i want to do is laugh and joke and have fun so when i go to these places and i'm met with this resistance or this like dislike or this feeling of like you don't belong here trust me it's not i'm I'm not looking for it i don't want that shit so it's real and it's there and you have to be cautious of it. So you should help, man. If you have more, you should help. You should give more. So just find a balance, man, and try to be the best person you could be. And that's all I can say. I want people to also who are privileged, uh, I'll say it like that, and who didn't grow up where we grew up, don't make this shit like a novelty. Don't don't make it like a fucking uh, yeah. a sideshow. Yeah, don't make it about you. Yeah, I, I hate when people like, because um, I, had, I had a couple of white friends who uh, uh, I no longer really talk to or know, but they would literally, um, you know, they lived in Orange County, but they would come down to Long Beach and stuff and whatever, and they would get their, their hair done by someone in Long Beach, and that was cool. Or they would drive by, they would drive through Compton, and that was like their, right. their, it's uh, like, it's their like a rush fucking zoo, for the day. Right. It's like, we're, yeah. like, we're exhibits. Like, what? Fucking, uh, like, no. People taking pictures in front of, like, Marcy Projects and yeah. shit. I'm like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, yeah. you don't understand what these people go through, and the thing about it, we don't know that it's bad growing up. To us, mm-hmm. everything's normal. 
everything is normal. So I didn't I didn't understand that the fucking the Carmelitos was a project until like I was what right. sixteen, seventeen. <laughs> I was like, that's niggas live in the Carmelitos. Right. Wait, what you want? Like yeah. and everything like I didn't understand that I lived in fucking low income housing until what so again high school? I was like, oh shit, I am poor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I thought we was making it. I thought yeah. I was balling out here. Um right. but like, you know, that's that's things where um <laughs> I feel like those people don't come from that situation. They want to glorify it. And they're like, oh, no. Like, you're cool because you grew up with... I didn't, I didn't want to fucking grow up with nothing. Right, That's man. the thing. Like, I didn't. Of course, it made me It made me who I am. And I, I understand shit better. And I feel like everyone who did grow up in the hood or grew up in the inner cities, uh, as white people want to say, um, you know... We wear it as a badge. Right. And, we do. and we're better for it. Right. Because we can understand. Like, we don't have issues with people because of their skin color. We don't have issues with people because... They're fucking gay. Right. You grow up around gay people all the time, man. Who cares? Like, yeah, man. Keep doing you. But I feel like every time there's an issue, it's always middle America. <laughs> they grow up in these fucking places where they're not around a lot of people, yeah. and they all think the same, or at least yeah. someone has an idea and they all pass it down. And it's like, no, it has to go like this. Don't date fucking Jamal Kelsey because he's <laughs> he's dangerous. Like, date yeah. Fuquan, he's way better. <laughs> but then be going to fucking Duke and be getting clapped out by the whole basketball. Right, <laughs> like, right, that's what I don't yeah. understand. Yeah, man. That's <laughs> like, exactly it. Like, yeah. I just don't get that shit. So please stop doing that. Yeah. All right. If you want to help, help. Give back. Give time. I don't give a fuck. Do not go on your Instagram and post little right. shit in front of shit. Don't tweet about how you love this rapper and, right. oh, he sold this, and I wish I could be. No, you don't. You don't want to be here. You right. don't want to be anywhere we have. You don't want to go through what we have to go through, honestly, because yeah. it's fucked up. Yeah. I've, seen, I've seen people that, like, uh, they claim all that or try to be that, and then I'll just say, like, they'll say something to me, and I'll just, like, something, like, kind of fucked up, and I'll just say what, but, like, you know, in that, that tone, like, you know, it's just, like, the natural tone you grew up with, like, growing up where we grew up. I just go, What? And then they get super scared. They get they get they start feeling threatened. They start doing that whole like, oh my god, like, oh Marcus being this and that. Like, I, got, I don't know. He was looking for it and blah blah blah. Even though I just did, did say something fucked up, but blah blah blah. And it's just, it's just like if you can't even handle like a simple like what like what the fuck did you just say? Yeah, man. Then then yeah. get yeah. the fuck out of here. Like right. don't even don't don't even be close to around it. I've been told to calm down in so many situations now oh that I'm like nah, like that was disrespectful. You can't do that. And they'll be like. Like, I mean, I, I get it because my girl wants my safety and everything like that. But it's like, I'm like, nah, like, they got to get it. Like, th there was a right. dude, uh, we were at some art museum. I forgot. It was somewhere in L.A. It was bougie. <laughs> but, uh, like, I had walked in with my girl, right? And uh, I'm just walking in. This white dude is just looking at me. He's just, like, staring at me, right? So, at first, I'm like, all right, maybe, you know, those weird moments where someone's looking your direction, you're looking their direction, but you're not, they're not looking at you. So, of course, keep walking. I look back. Still looking at me. Mm. I keep walking. I turn again. He's still looking at me. Like, and I'm like, I can tell because he's following me as I'm walking. So I just turn around. I'm like, hey, nigga, you got a problem or something? Like, what's up, my nigga? Like, and then my girl's like, what are you doing? She grabs me and shit. And I was like, fuck this nigga. Right. Like, he's walking <laughs> in this bitch and this nigga looking at me yeah. like I done did something. To, like, and then she's like, no, like you don't even know and everything. I'm that. Like, I get those moments, right? Yeah. And you know, that's the type of shit where I understand that we have to be quote unquote better and not take shit to that point. But it's so hard. It's so hard because what, like, uh, you know, every every minority, and I know you know this. If I'm walking, and I hate saying it generically, but I'm just gonna be stereotypical right now. If you're walking down the street, a white person's here, you're here. What's the first thing minorities do when we walk past a white person? Hey. Like we have to like show them that we're not a threat. And I fucking hate that shit, man. And I feel like there needs to be a change. I don't know if it needs to be from us and like. Like, now I don't even fucking do it in my neighborhood. I don't fucking speak to any person that I see just because I'm like, what's 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 the point? I live here. What am I going to do to you? Right. I don't want <laughs> to... I, I, I don't want to... I don't want to have to show you that I'm not a threat, man. Just take me as not a threat. I'm not doing anything. And I feel like if anybody that, like, glorify Like, that that's not from the hood and glorifies that shit... And, and is, but I was, is also afraid of it in a weird way. Just go, man. Get some fucking friends of a different color fr than you. Learn about these different things. Because I guarantee you, man, Long Beach and the hood has so much fucking love. If you come here, you're not in fucking danger. Just don't do shit that's going to get you in trouble. Don't yeah. fucking walk around at night at 11 o'clock. Fucking common sense shit. Yeah. Right. So it's just that. And, you know, and I'll share one last story because uh, you guys made me think about it as we're talking. I got into it with this director in Toronto with the show that I was doing. Mm. And uh, he said he did some disrespectful shit. Right. He's a white dude. And, like, I had 10 pages of dialogue that I needed to do. 
and I couldn't get through it because I had just got it the night, the night before. And he kept coming to me with direction. He's like, hey, man, can you maybe, like, hold the this while you're doing this and say it, like, right here? And finally, after, the, after like, an eight-hour day, I was like, hey, man, can you just stop? Like, can you stop and just let me, like, let me get through this? And he's like, fine. You know what, Manny? Do what you want to do. And he walked off like that, just like this. And I, like, sat there and I ate it and I did my take. He yelled, cut. I went to the uh, to Video Village, you know, like where the director and the right, producers right. are. And I went to him and I heard him, like, talking shit. And then immediately when he saw me walking up, he, like, straightened up. He's like, hey, Manny. And I'm like, hey. Uh, I was like, and I had my hands just like this to, to like, show that I'm not a threat. I'm like, hey, do we have a problem? And I said it just like that. And he was like, well, you know, you completely disrespected me and you said this. And I'm like, well, you, do you understand that I have to learn this? And by you walking away, it's not getting, any, getting us anywhere. So we need to find a common ground in order to, to, to get through this. And he's like, well, yeah, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm like, cool, so we cool? And he was like, yeah. I'm like, cool. Shook his hand and then walked back and continued with my day. And I was like, cool, that was a very mature way of handling that. I get home. It's 2 a.m. The fucking showrunner calls me and is like, Manny, I... What's going on? I heard that you like threatened uh, to beat up the director. That like he he says that you're like the worst actor he's ever worked with because you like threatened his life. And I'm like, what? I'm like, what, the, what are you talking about? I thought we had a good like man talk. What? what, what? And he's like, he's saying that he's gonna walk off set and he's not gonna finish. And I'm like, what? And I was young at this younger at this time, so I wasn't mature enough and strong enough to be like, no, fuck that. I'm not apologizing to that dude. So I t I regret it to this day. I walked up to him the next day. And I, I was like, hey, man, like, I'm sorry if I offended you in any way. And he's like, hey, man, no, it's no big deal, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what the fuck? You went to all of production and made them think that I'm a problem, and now you want to save face in front of me and be like, oh, no, it's cool, bro. Fuck you, man. <laughs> Damn, so, like, boy. You, you shook my hand a little too hard, and then right. like, I felt really like my life was in danger. The... He made you tap it's all just... night, man. He made you tap. All it's just shit night. that, like, I have to deal with that. Like, my friends would be like, oh, are you sure it's just not you? And I'm like, fuck. You just don't get it. You don't get it. And there would be moments. Uh, it's f funny you're sharing all this stuff now. Uh, I would tell your brother, like, I'd see you do stuff, and I would be like, I don't know how he does it. Couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. Like, <laughs> can't. And then, like, can a world, like, um, like you being in that world. You know, oh, but, and being, like, taking direction from shit. You know, people, it's like, I'll fuck you up. You know, like, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. And now I'm learning or I'm like, you know what? No, it could be us because it it's not that. It's really not. It's not that big of a deal yeah. if you just learn to just let go of the shit that you know yeah. you're, is instilled in you. It's not that bad. But there was like a lot of stuff where I was just like, I was like, I don't know how he does it. Like I don't know how like because like I, we know you, so I'm like I don't know how he. I know he sees that these people fake. The I know only, he sees that these people like. The suckers. only hard part is that, and the other hard part is like when somebody's like, you know, do it more like you know like. Like tough, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, like what? I'm like, I have some like old lady or old man director telling me, you know, just do it like, you know, like, and I'm like, what? What are you doing? What is this thing that you think that like black like, people like, 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 <laughs> You know, just do it how you know how they, you know how they talk, and I'm like, <laughs> like, like who is you, they? Like with this like, and yeah. like with the lean and the walk and the like, you know like. So like in my younger days in acting, I'd be like, I, I would take offense to it and try to school them, and now I'm just like, okay. <laughs> And I'm just going to do what the fuck I want to do. And then I'll do it. And I'll be like, yeah, just like that. <laughs> I did the same I thing. Mean, your note was great. Uh, but... <laughs> so that's it. Bro. Um, all right, real quick. What's the, uh, what, what have we learned from this nifty situation? Mark. That's how we're going to end it. Uh, what have we learned? Is there anything that we've learned from this nifty situation? If you're trying to do something great, be fucking careful. Like, if you're trying to help out your community, do it in a very careful way. Have... Have your security around. Like, have multiple security around. Like, don't matter if you look like like a punk or whatever, like a bitch. What's more important is the work you're gonna do for it, for the place you're trying to help. So. Yeah, man. If you're at Nipsey's level, I, I think it's it's it should be respected to have security around you like that because yeah. you are for real living in both both of those worlds, and that's tough to do. What I've learned, and I've said it already, I think I don't think it's wise to have both feet in both worlds. I think it's just too tough. Um, so I think you need to kind of have a good balance. And like everything in life, mediation is the key. Uh, for me, uh, growing up, we were always taught, you know, uh, to understand the message. Don't really care about the messenger and everything like that. I feel like in this situation, this was the first time where the messenger was just as important as the message. So that's something that I'm kind of holding on to. We got to we gotta hold on to our figures, man, that are, yeah. that are really pushing this shit. And we got to protect them because we don't got a lot. At all, no, no, and no. we just lost a really big one, 
And I don't know how long it's going to be until we get another one. Yeah. I don't know if you are watching this right now and you're going to be that person. And this is going to be it's going to spark something in you to be like, I want to do this and that. If it, if it does, great. Yeah. But we have to protect the people that we have. We have to protect this person. Like We have to protect everyone who's out really doing it from our community. Because at the end of the day, we all we got. Yeah, man. As cliche as it sounds, we all we got. It's so true. Stop glorifying like Takashi Six Nine and people like that that mm-hmm. are just trying to act tough. And then as soon as they get in a serious situation, they're like, "No, uh, he did it. He did it. He did it. He did it." <laughs> yep. I don't do that. Do I that. think he did it. I yeah, think yeah, he did yeah. it. <laughs> don't glorify these dudes, man. It's glorify, in a mirror. You know, <laughs> glorify the good dads out there and the the ones that are living what you think is a boring life because that's keeping it real to me. Glorify the Nipsies. Glorify the Kendricks, the J Coles that are out there doing real shit and trying to help. And fucking Jay. Z, man. Fuck, bro. Everything that you're doing, man. God bless you, dude. I heard he just did the $15 million trust for his kids. Uh, He paid for Meek Mill's legal fees. And I hope all of this is true. And the little savage taxes and stuff. God bless you, man. You are... (sighs) Gotta protect him. You are, man. Gotta protect him. And I feel like Jay's the perfect example because he's living in both worlds in a really cool way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because he can still go to the hood with security. But in the hood, he'll still listen to him. Right. But he's also in the corporate world. And cor- the corporate world res- respects him, too, but also looks at him as a black dude. I'm right. sorry. They still look at you that way. He's doing it smart. He's fucking brilliant. God bless you, man. And uh, there's a Jay-Z quote I he- heard today that was, like, it made perfect sense. He said to somebody, he was like, how can I, um... he was like, why do I have to go back to the hood if people already know that I was here? Oh, shit. Like, he's like, they already, he's like, they seen that. Oh, you know, shit. there's there's no point for me to come back here for what? He was like, you should already know. If you don't know, then that's on you. But I thought that was perfect. I like it, that. He completely just ended all that talk. And yeah. he's like, I don't need to be here. I don't need to be here because I was here. Yeah. And I don't have to come back to prove anything to you. I'm taking that. That's good. <laughs> it's but, my quote now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tweet it tomorrow. <laughs> um, Mark, hit him with the plugs. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, How Do I Know You, uh, hashtag H-D-I-K-Y. It's way easier way to find us. Find us on Twitter, How, how Do I Know You 1, cute little picture of hippo. We'll change soon. Uh, my personal one, at I am Mark Mark. Uh, my personal one, at DC Junior 13. My personal one's not important. <laughs> okay. Follow these dudes. It's a really fun <laughs> show. No, no bullshit, man. Like I'm really proud. I'm really happy watching it because a lot of people don't have time to sit and listen to podcasts. And even, like, as close as I am with them, I wasn't really listening to it. But the hot takes... Oh my God. <laughs> Get off our the show. The hot no. takes, when we I'm sitting on the toilet, and I have some time, I'm just sitting there, and I'm like... <laughs> and I move on to the next one, and it's just fun. It's nice to have a good laugh. Uh, but, oh, yeah, that reminds me. We have an Instagram now. H-D-I-K-Y-1. That one. That's, but That's where you'll see most of our stuff. Yeah. yeah, most of the hot takes, and you can find the YouTube and all that shit there, too. But, as we always say, if I don't know... And you don't know who really knows. And how do I know you? I want to thank Manny for coming out. Thanks, bro. For sure. Thanks for having me, man. This was fun. Good conversation. Yeah. Rest in peace to Nipsey, of course. Yeah. The marathon continues. It always will continue. We love you, man. Rest in peace. Blessings.